Hello! Today we will have another installment of daily JavaScript. Uh, today I'd like to talk about um, text processing. And this might seem like uh, kind of a either a really big topic or not a very exciting topic. But uh, I think there's a few interesting ideas here and there's some very practical things that can apply to a lot of situations. So, you know, here we go. Here's my example. I'll say, you know, this was a really interesting topic. And then I'll put a couple line returns in here. Let's zoom in on this, right? And then, uh, let's see, let me move this out of the way here. And then we'll type now on this next line, we'll say, you know, I like this JavaScript stuff. And thanks again, wait. Okay, there we go, right? And now I'm going to hit the Submit button. And what happens? Well, it all ends up on one line, okay? So imagine, you know, you have an input field, like a text area, in it, and you want to create a new post or a new, you know, comment or something like that, right, in, in your program that you're making, right? But when you take in all of the, um, all the text in this text area here, then you put it into an HTML element, JavaScript reduces all the white space to a single space. So, you know, here I have two line returns, right? There's two line returns, but at the end of topic here, that two line returns gets reduced to a single space. And if I, if I inspect this here and look at it like this, you can see that, you know, I actually have the two line returns in you know, the source code here, but, you know, they don't get displayed in the page, right? So really what we need is we need to wrap this in a paragraph tag, right? But the thing is, you know, we really can't type in the paragraph tag or we can't ask people to do this when they go to our site. You know, oh, well, that's looking okay now. Oh, now this has a line return there, right? Um, but we can't ask people to do that, right? That's not going to work. Um, so, so how do we handle it? Well, I have a simple JavaScript thing. We'll, we'll build this in a moment, right? Um, I'm going to comment out this last line. And then now we'll, we'll refresh it. And then I'll type a few things in here. I'll type a few things. Then... I might type some more. And then on the last line, we'll say, now we have paragraphs. Oops, paragraphs. There we go, right? And then I'll hit submit. And then now, you know, here we go, right? And if I, if I look at this in the inspector, what you'll see inside this display message is I've got, you know, multiple paragraphs, right? So what we're doing is we're just, you know, looking for <clears throat> any time where we have two line returns, okay? And then we're wrapping the two line returns, you know, the text between the two line returns in, in a paragraph tag. So this is a little imperfect, you know, it doesn't you know, it doesn't work super perfect here. Not bad. You know, I added three line returns here, and, you know, it still kind of caught it, though it made an empty paragraph. But, you know, so it's kind of working. Let's take a look and, and take this apart and see how it works, right? So I'm going to go into my code here, and we'll just actually, let me just delete all of the code there and the style. And the only thing I'm doing is I'm importing jQuery, right? So I got my link to jQuery there. And, uh, and then let's give it a, a go here, right? So what we'll do first is we'll make a text area, right? And then um, maybe we'll wrap a whole thing in a form. And we'll give this form an ID name here, and we'll call it um, you know, form, right? That'll be really simple and easy. And maybe I'll move this paragraph inside the form here. And then um, we'll make a submit button.
something like that, right? And uh, what I like to do is I like to wrap the submit button actually in a paragraph because that'll put it on its own line. I didn't do that in the last example, but uh, I'll do it here. It'll move this thing down underneath the text area, right? So there we go. So let's uh, let's refresh it. So there's my input field, my text area, and there's my submit button. And then just to make this a little easier to work with, maybe we'll say, you know, text area it has a, you know, width of 200 pixels and a height of 100 pixels like that, right? Why is that not even there? There. There we go, right? Okay, so so we'll save that and refresh it here. Oh, there we go. Good, nice, large text area there. We'll zoom out a little bit. And then um, our next step here is to add a little JavaScript. So the first thing I want to do is I want to handle the form. So when you click the Submit button, I want to grab the data from the text area and do something, okay? So we'll include a script tag here at the bottom of the page. And then we'll uh, we'll add a jQuery element there. I'll just call it text area, right? And we'll say, oh, actually, you know, this should be the form. Sorry. Let's do form. And we'll say submit. There we go. So now when we submit the form, we'll handle that form submission with this event. Okay? And normally when you submit a form, uh, HTML reloads the page and we'll prevent that with event prevent default. Okay? Okay, so now we'll get into the real example. So the first thing I want to do is get the, um, the text out of the text area. So we'll we'll use uh, jQuery text area dot val to get the value, you know, the string value of the text here. And then what we want to do is split this into an array, okay? And what we want to do is we want to split it into an array and split it on the double line return. Okay, so so what we'll do is this. We'll say um, var message array. Maybe we're splitting it into an array, so we'll call it an array. And then we'll say message.split. Okay, so oh, we've got to spell it right. So, uh, so this will split the string message on this string here into an array and so this string is not included but everything you know like for example if there was a bunch of commas you could put a comma there and everything you know to the left of a comma would become you know the first comma would become the first item in the array the comma would be removed and then everything to the left of the next comma would be the second item in the array right so if you had something like this you know if you had uh, a comma B comma C, this would become an array with A, B, and C in it, right? You know, or for example, if this was like, you know, you know, um, Jim uh, Powers age. 33, right? Then this would be, you know, Jim Powers age 33, okay? And then you'd have an array, but, you know, the commas are missing, you know, and you're just getting the string from each of the values separated by the comma. Actually, I didn't include a space here, so technically, if the space is here, we'd end up with a space right here and here right, because there's a space, okay? Um, so what we want to do is imagine you write the first line, and then right here at this point, you have 
a line return and another line return. And in, in JavaScript, in a string, this backslash is called an escape character, and it escapes special characters that you can't type sometimes, right? Like in certain circumstances, you know, if you wanted to create a string here, let me do it on the next line here. Like if I said, you know, var test equals, you know, line one, and then I want to put line two on the next line, you know, I can't do that, right? But what I can do is I can do this, right? And these two characters together, the backslash and the N, uh, represent, you know, a line return, right? And, you know, we can test that. We can say console log, and then we'll log the test string, right? Let's take a look at that. Maybe I'll just, I'll even move this outside of this submit function there so it just happens when I load the page, right? So we'll save that and refresh it. And in our console here, you can see like line one is on line one and line two is on the second line. <clears throat> so uh, so there we go, right? Um, in my case, you know, if someone's typing in here, if you are typing, you'll probably put a line return, but you'll probably do another one, right? Like this, and then you'll do, this is a new line. Something like that, right? So, so I'm going to look for two line returns, because there's one to here, and then there's another one to get to here, right? Okay? So let's give that a try. What, what would that look like? Let's get rid of this for the moment. And probably don't need that. So we're going to split here, not on the comma, but on the backslash n and backslash n. So that'll be two line returns, right? And then what we want to do, like if I went to here and I, if I got this far and I logged the results, then, you know, I would, I would get something like this, right? I'm going to refresh that. And I'll say line one and line two, and then I'll hit submit. And then you can see I got an array here with line one and line two. Hmm. So now what I need to do is I need to put these two things together, but with a paragraph, you know, wrapping each one of these, right? And there's a couple ways we can do this. Why don't we try this, though, first, right? So we'll say... Um, how about var new message equals message array dot join right and so join takes a string it takes a, an array of of strings and then joins them all together back into a, a single string right so what we're going to do is we're going to join on the um the closing p and the opening p right and then we'll we'll console log that again right something like that right so we'll, we'll log new message and then we'll go here and we'll refresh it again and i'll type in line one hit two line returns type in line two and then we'll hit submit and then you can see here I've got line one, you know, closing p tag, opening p tag, line two. So now, so this is working pretty good, except I just need a, a, a p here and a closing p tag here. Okay, let's give it a try. So what we'll do is let's make another element here for output. So we'll make a div here, give it an ID name called output, and then we'll put our string that we're outputting, we'll move the string from here into the div here, right? And we will uh, we'll add, you know, some paragraphs in there, right? So I'll put, a, put the name here, like that. And then what I want to do is I want to say, you know, how about just say p plus new message 
plus closing P, right? Because remember, this will have paragraphs like this, you know, tags in, in between each double line return. Okay, so essentially, you know, between here and here, we're just swapping this for this. Okay? And then at the, as the last step, we're adding, you know, a paragraph at the beginning and end, like an opening and closing tag. So we'll save that and let's see what it looks like. So I'll refresh it. Type in line one, line two, and then hit submit. Oh wait. Oh yeah, I guess I'm. I, I this is looking correct here. It's not showing the paragraph at the beginning and end because uh, because that we didn't output that right. You know that's not that's not what we're seeing here right. We're getting that at the very end. Let's inspect it. So we'll uh, inspect the stuff here. And there we go. So there's a paragraph, 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 and closing paragraph. So that's working pretty good. Let's try what if I did like a third line, right? Line number three. Blah, we'll add a couple things here. And then hit submit. Oh, look, and then we got our three paragraphs, right? So anyway, so I hope that's useful. And uh, I think it would be useful anytime you have input that goes in you know from a form into a database but you want it to come out and read you know closer to what people you know did when they input the the stuff right because people are going to input like this with a line return to kind of separate you know elements that they type like ideas and whatnot right um you know to create paragraphs and you know they're not going to create paragraph tags for you instead you know we can have our script create the paragraph okay and then also as a as a side note, you know, um, besides that being, you know, having practical value, um, this idea of split and join is very useful, right? So split allows us to split a string on a string, and join allows us to join an array of strings, inserting, you know, something in between the join, right? Like some string in between all the, all the strings in the array, okay? So anyway, hope that's useful, and thanks for watching.